Is it possible to better our heart health by strategically stocking our kitchen cupboards and pantries? This is a Healthier Michigan podcast, episode 151, and coming up, we discuss ways that we can stock our shelves to better our heart health. Welcome to a Healthier Michigan podcast. It's a podcast that's dedicated to navigating how we can all improve our health and well-being through small, healthy habits we can start implementing right now. I'm your host, Chuck Gatica, and every other week we'll sit down with a certified expert and we discuss topics that are going to cover nutrition, fitness, and a whole lot more. And today there's a lot of focus on nutrition because in this episode, we're diving deep into the foods that we keep in the house, specifically in the cupboards, how they impact our heart health. With us today is Maddie Yaw. She's a budding nutritionist. She's got a passion for empowering people through food, and she's got a master's in public health in nutrition sciences from U of M. Looks forward to becoming a registered dietitian in the new future, near future. And if that's not enough, she's also a volunteer with the American Heart Association. Good to have you with us, Maddie. Thanks, Chuck. And I know you enjoy navigating around the kitchen, cooking, baking, and yet you love the outdoors and hanging out with family and friends. So you're going to be one of those people that, you know, comes over to somebody else's house and maybe they hide the chips. I mean, I'm just looking at all <laughs> your credentials thinking, oh, no, Maddie's coming over. Oh, my gosh. But the, it's got to be a fantastic thing that you're doing because you see things that maybe all of us won't pick out in our kitchen cabinets and cupboards. They are kind of a window on our lifestyle and diet, aren't they, all those items? Yeah, most definitely. And yeah, I think, you know, there's room for everything in moderation, but it's really about how how you meaningfully stock your pantry. So there are a lot of things that reach the expiration date, you know, stuff we don't eat anymore or we didn't, we bought it, but we don't like it. But then there are these items that we constantly are rotating But something we might not think about is how these items that we stock up on, we may like them. We're coming, you know, from the holidays, so we may have gotten our sweet taste buds, you know, taken care of and all that. But how are these items affecting our heart health? So when it comes to foods that we choose, which staples would you say, you know, the go-to stuff that we should have always on hand, what stuff should we be looking at to better our heart health? Yeah, great question. Well, I think, or I like to think about what's in your cupboard and kind of categories. And so like a really important category for good heart health is fiber. Fiber helps lower cholesterol. And there are a lot of great sources that are shelf stable. So for example, we have canned beans, fruits and vegetables, and also whole grain products like whole wheat pasta, or brown rice, quinoa, and also whole grain cereals like um, regular Cheerios. Those are high in soluble fiber. And all of these together can help promote a heart healthy diet. Also, another category is protein. Protein is going to help keep you satiated. And again, beans are a good source of fiber and protein. And a plant based diet is also recommended for heart health. And so beans fall right in line there. Also like nuts and seeds and nut butters like peanut butter or almond butter. Not only do those provide protein, but also healthy fats like your omega-3s and omega-6 fatty acids. And also you might not think about like canned tuna or salmon or sardines. Those are also good sources of protein that are shelf stable. And like when they're packed in olive oil, they're a good source of healthy fats as well. And then kind of the last category is healthy fats, which interweaves with a a lot of the things I've talked about already with the nuts and seeds, and then those fish that are high in healthy fats. And when you talk about healthy fats, the obvious choice that comes to mind for most of us is probably olive oil. But I'm hearing a lot of buzz about avocado oil and other plant-based oils. Do you have favorites or ones that you would suggest that we consider maybe switching out or adding to the pantry? Yeah, I think olive oil is a great choice because it's very versatile and it's high in monounsaturated fats, which can help decrease your risk of cardiovascular disease. And avocado oil, that's also 
a good choice. It has a higher smoke point than olive oil. So a lot of people like to use that for like roasting vegetables and cooking at high temperatures. And really, those are my two main go-tos. I think olive oil is a little bit more affordable than avocado oil. And I think both of those are going to be best for heart health when compared to something like coconut oil or butter, which are higher in saturated fat. Yeah. And you know, you talked about beans, which a lot of people don't think of that bonus in the little like black beans. First of all, they're incredibly inexpensive, right? I mean, sometimes I'll walk through the grocery store and see the special 10 cans, a buck a piece or something, and you're getting at least two half cup servings of black beans in one can. So you're getting the fiber, the water content, and you're getting the protein if you're trying to lean plant-based. But it's really an affordable option. And of course, it's a canned good, so it's going to have a pretty good shelf life, huh? Yeah, definitely. Like, I can buy a can of beans, and the expiration date isn't until 2025. I think I'd probably use it before then, but they last a long time. And you know, it finally hit me. I don't know why I'm just a slow learner, Maddie, but you know, it hit me that when I'm on the go, one of the places that makes a wrap, I can skip if I want to. I'm not a vegetarian, but I can skip the chicken or the meat and ask for a double black beans, just light rice, you know, get the extra veggies. You can create a pretty good wrap without lathering it all up and adding a bunch of stuff to it and still have these beans, which I know is giving me all the stuff that you're talking about. So that's a nice thing to get on the go too. Yeah, most definitely. And I love how beans have both fiber and protein. So you're really getting a two for one. So when you start to think of things that are in the average person's kitchen, because like you said, we're all going to have some kind of fun factor in our lives. Maybe it's chips here and there with a sandwich or, you know, there's your favorite, whatever it is. So when you start to think about those average items in our household, do you see substitutions that we should really think about adding in places that would be better than stuff that you may assume that a lot of us have just around? Yeah, Again, I think there's room for everything in moderation, but really trying to focus on like whole grain products, maybe choosing brown rice over white rice or whole wheat pasta, or even like they have chickpea pasta now over regular pasta and just trying to incorporate more fiber. The average American doesn't get enough fiber. The recommended daily value is about 25 grams a day. And most people are getting about like, 14 grams. So really trying to look for fiber and keeping that on hand. I don't really think there's a substitution for potato chips or um, <laughs> like cookies. It's There's nothing that's going to really hit that craving in the same way. But I think you can strategically organize your cupboards and maybe like put those someplace you're not always going to see them when you go to the cupboard maybe keeping like the nuts and seeds. They make little snack packs of trail mix. Those are a great option for a quick snack. And so maybe keeping those in a place that's easier to access than say the chips or cookies. Well, you know what I do, and it's a hack for me because I don't I don't really particularly care for potato chips, but I have found whether it's potatoes or sweet potatoes, thinly sliced very, very little olive oil and use the air fryer. So to be fair, I don't know that I make them in bulk and I've never put them in a baggie. I don't think they would keep, but I make them. So they're kind of like a pan fried, you know, potato. And I'll use that with whatever I'm doing. And I'm telling you, it goes in waves, but I have gotten hooked on that idea because it's kind of farm to table to begin with, but there's not much fat involved. And it's just the real stuff, right? To your point, it's the real stuff. It's not substitutes are all gummed up with all kinds of additives, huh? Right. Yeah. And I really like that idea because you can you can use like olive oil, just a squirt of that, and you can really choose your seasonings to keep a variety of different flavors. And so you never get bored. Yeah. And if you cut them the right way, which of course would look more like a French fry and you use the air fryer and a little bit of ketchup, they're not your favorite brand of fries on the go, but I'm just saying it's really good stuff. And it's, I've just gotten hooked on this idea of using the air fryer. So it's helping. You know, sometimes I think so many of us in a busy world, even if we're still working from home and some people still are, we're still 
looking for convenience. And I mentioned that thing, if I'm on the run, I'll find somebody who's making a wrap or something and, and try to keep it healthy. But especially when we're on the go, that seems to be some of the biggest challenges. How would you suggest that we balance convenience and eating healthy when it comes to our heart health? What other ideas would you have? I think, well, it's there's nothing wrong with eating out now and again, but I think really having a plan in place ahead of time can help you when times are busy. So for example, maybe taking 20 minutes at the start of the week to just quickly jot down some meal ideas. You can go in depth and like look up recipes and make a shopping list off of that. Or you can just have a loose frame of ideas, really whatever works for you. But that can really save you time and money in the long run. And I think the key to meal planning is to frankly just get started. It can be intimidating for a lot of people, but if you find what works best for you, then you'll thank yourself later. And you know what I love about some of the things you're talking about? They seem like, I don't know, they they seem like they make so much sense. It's just common sense, right? That we should have more fiber. But I remember in a previous episode we did with the American Heart Association, the notion of heart health equal sign brain health. And I would say hearing you today is also equal sign gut health. Like a lot of the things we're doing for our heart health is really good for our overall general health, right? Most definitely especially with the fiber, you're going to help increase that good bacteria in your gut and you're just going to be feeling great all around. So you're navigating around your own kitchen. You enjoy baking, you know, that goes in seasons, right? Sometimes based around holidays. What are some of the things that you make for yourself? Like I mentioned using the air fryer. I talked to somebody the other day. They said, yeah, I've got one in the box. I've never opened it yet. And I thought, oh my gosh, I don't know how long you've had it, but it's it's this little miracle device that sits on the counter now that, you know, you can reheat, you can make the chips. I was to all kinds of stuff. What are some of the hacks that you personally are using or some of the things you've stumbled across that you love to make and eat that are great for us? Yeah. Well, I also have an air fryer, but I don't actually use it that much because it takes up a lot of space. Yeah, it does. All the time. It does do that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but the oven, like just roasting vegetables in the oven I do that at least twice a week, like Brussels sprouts, carrots, broccoli. There are a lot of different things you can roast in the oven. And it really, I think, enhances the flavor. Like roasted Brussels sprouts, one of my favorite foods. And I like roasting veggies because you can also roast like chicken at the same time as well as potatoes. And then, bam, you have a meal right there, just roasted sheet pan of veggies, potatoes, and chicken very quick and easy. I also like lots of soups and stews this time of year. I love lentils. I don't know if you've ever had them, but they have a great texture and they're very filling. They're a great plant-based source of protein and high in fiber as well. Another thing I like to do is I like to like kind of meal prep or batch prep. So for example, if I know that during the week, I'm going to be making some dinners that are going to use rice. I'll make the rice ahead of time to save myself a step. Doing things like that can really help save me time and energy later in the week. And really today, we've gotten to a point where uh, while we're all trying to eat as fresh as we can, using frozen vegetables with the technology that there is, you know, especially when you've got kids or you've got family or job constraints and you're trying to do all that you can for this idea of convenience, you know, using frozen vegetables are still a good idea because it seems like this flash frozen thing that they're all using now, it keeps things really fresh and and almost farm to table. They just happen to be cold to start, you know. Most definitely. Yeah. Frozen vegetables are often frozen at the peak of flavor. And so really what you might be using from the freezer might have more flavor than what you would get at the store, especially this time of year in the winter. And I, I think they are great in like stir fries or soups and stews and the texture does it, it fits very well in those types of dishes in my opinion so you know you were talking about using brussels sprouts and you know whatever else uh, in the oven we do that as well and we kind of fell into the habit brussels sprouts or cauliflower brussels sprouts or cauliflower and you know a little sprinkle of parm and a little bit of olive oil and then my wife came across a recipe for a little bit of a brush on thing, it does have some brown sugar in it, but it's like soy sauce, little brown sugar, and it, it adds this glaze. 
and maybe it, I don't know if it has balsamic or not. Anyway, and she just brushes it on fresh carrots that we've cut up into sticks and, and you put it in the, you don't have to keep it in there that long. And I'm telling you, Maddie, oh my gosh, it's like, it's like carrot candy, but it's not super sweet, but I just, I could eat a whole plate of these things. So you have to find that you know, the thing that makes you say, oh yeah, now I like carrots, right? I didn't yesterday, but today I do, right? Yeah. And that sounds delicious. And, you know, like you said, you, you can't give up. You got to try things different ways and, you know, you will find how you like it. There's so many different flavors you can add and different ways to prepare food and it can be kind of intimidating, but it's, it can also be fun. Yeah, you're right. And I think it's that part of that sense of adventure. Like I didn't know I would like the little crispy things that come off on the Brussels sprouts until I tend to like burnt toast anyway, but I tend to like all that extra crispy stuff. And I thought, oh man, this is a, this is a great idea for me. So it works out well. So as we start to wrap up some practical tips that someone can use in their home today to help revamp the kitchen, the pantry, to impact better health, especially heart health. What are those suggestions? Yeah, I think, first of all, having at least two or three quick and easy meals you always have the ingredients for in your cupboards or maybe in supplement with your like freezer, that can help save you time, money, and effort during the week. So that might look like, you know, maybe a chili, a black bean chili or some black bean tacos, or a tuna noodle salad, or even like a quick veggie stir fry or veggie fried rice. Those are all quick and easy options that are delicious and affordable for sure. Also, another tip, kind of knowing what's in your cupboards, what do you have on hand? This can help promote using what you have, and maybe you have more than you think. And it can also be a quick food fix when you you need a quick meal or snack during the week and it can help prevent you from maybe eating out maybe choosing like black bean tacos to have can be better than getting fast food and then of course just stocking your cupboard with heart healthy foods from the get-go can ultimately help promote heart healthy eating which makes sense well, lots of good stuff for sure. And I know that, you know, you as a budding registered dietitian here in the new future, you've got a great future ahead of you because master nutritional science and where you're headed and great advice for us today. It all seems like simple stuff, but, you know, for New Year's resolutions and moving into our new year, it would seem like the perfect idea to start to, you know, open things up, look at what you've got, take stock in the stock and uh, start to make some changes. And, and some of those refinements can have huge impacts, Maddie. Most definitely. And, you know, just one more thing. I think like canned foods or frozen foods, they they might get a bad rap from time to time because they are processed, but they can be affordable and convenient options that can help you maintain and promote overall good heart health when you choose the right things to have in your cupboards or fridge. Yeah, good advice. Well, Maddie, you all, thanks for joining us today. Thank you, Chuck. It was a pleasure. Yeah, take good care. And thank you for listening to a Healthier Michigan podcast brought to you by Blue Cross Blue Shield of Michigan. If you'd like to know more about the show, you can always check us out on our newly refreshed website. It's a healthiermichigan.org slash podcast, or you can leave us a review or a rating on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. You can also check out episodes on our YouTube channel, and you can follow us on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. You can get all the new episodes, all of our old episodes as well to take with you as you're working out, contemplating your heart health that way as well. You can take them with you with your smartphone, your tablet, however you want to take them. Be sure to subscribe to us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or your favorite podcast app. Thanks again to Maddie, and thank you for being with us. Stay well.